In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to solo access the Dark Eater Rift in Modern Warfare Zombies. This includes a solo walkthrough for the Act 4 mission called Bad Signal, and then a guide for the Hidden Quest, and finally, a few tips to survive in the Dark Eater alone, where you can find new classified loot like the Eater Blade weapon, a dark bone to spawn in the highest tier friendly Hellhound, and a regenerating Golden Armor Plate. Plus, you can get the schematics of the previously listed items by doing some extra steps which will be explained later on once the Dark Eater Rift is open. So, without further ado, let's start with the first step and my recommended setup. First, make sure you select and activate the new Act 4 story mission, and once you are in the game, head over to this exact part of the map near the high red zone. You will find the portal here, and you have to interact with it and confirm you want to go through to start the story mission. But completing this solo requires some heavy setup, so here are my recommendations. Complete contracts until you have enough points to buy a legendary weapon from the tier 3 zone and pack a punch it to tier 2 at least. I use my MCW assault rifle since I had a spare legendary ether tool. I also highly recommend using the RGL grenade launcher as your secondary weapon, tier 1 pack a punch and rare rarity at the very least. Your perk setup is totally up to you, as you can see I went all out, but if you want to save time, elemental pump, death perception and tombstone are not crucial. Make sure you have decoys, a 3 plate armor vest, stack up as many self revives as you can and have transit guard as your field upgrade. The last two things are not super necessary, but activating the tier 3 dog to revive you can come in handy alongside some circuits for the deadbolt turrets. After activating the portal, you will be teleported to the Dark Ether, since this is a story mission all the zombies will be tier 2 enemies. You have 30 minutes inside to complete this mission, which is breaking 4 seals, all marked with a yellow icon on your screen. Before moving on, make sure you protect the friendly Hellhound from the Disciples if you decide to bring it in. These enemies can lock the Hellhound and steal all of its health without you even noticing it, eventually killing the Hellhound. But back to the mission, you have to run over to each seal and hold the interaction button to activate them. You will then need to fill up the pillars with zombie souls while they are inside the mist that's on the ground or else the kill won't come. Once done, the pillar will break and reveal a small offering which will be familiar later on. Inside the brain rot pillar, you will find the pill bottle. The dead wire pillar hides a surveillance camera. The napalm burst pillar has a dog collar. And finally, the cryo freeze pillar contains a locked diary. So after breaking the fourth seal, you will get the prompt to leave the Dark Ether, and the exit portal will be marked with an icon on your screen. But instead of going straight there, on the road in front of the portal, you can find a dead bolt to red that I would advise to activate. Even though it won't deal instant amount of damage to the boss, it still locks onto it, providing help in breaking its armor, and stays active for 2 minutes per circuit. Because yes, when you go near the portal, the new Etherworm boss named Gorgant will emerge from the ground to face you in a boss fight. Run back to the road and stay near the restroom, because this is the perfect place to hide from the boss's attacks. And I'm mainly talking about the purple ores that deal huge amount of damage, but here you can easily deal with them by spamming the grenade launcher. You can wait for them inside or near the building and they may be easy targets when they stay on the side of the fortress. But now let's talk about how to deal damage to the boss. You can see exposed purple glowing areas on both the left and the right side of the worm and those are the weak points. First you must break the scale above the exposed area, exposing it even further and then you have to shoot that spot to explode it. I usually stayed near the restroom to shoot the boss from the right and the left side and I switched sides when it did the slam or the laser attack. But just to know when it does the slam attack and it directly hits you, the boss will eat you and spit you out alive. To survive this attack, you must spam the parachute button inside the worm's mouth for a safety landing so you can run back to the building. Also, when you see this animation, the worm will burrow underground and it's time to use the RGL again. If you shoot at the beach with the grenade launcher, the boss will notice this seismic activity and emerge from the spot where you shot the grenade launcher at. I think it's really cool that we can lure the boss out with this feature. And as far as I know, this hardly works with bullet weapons, but I know it does with launchers and the ray gun. Lastly, for more safety, you can also use the zip line behind the rest room to ascend to the fortress to shoot the gun again from safety and from the higher ground. But the further away you go, the higher chance it has to regenerate its health. When you see a purple ring on the ground, that's what's happening. Counter that simply jump down to the beach where the ammo refill is to force it to emerge from the ground and run back to safety to continue the fight. But once you successfully kill the worm, collect the loot from the ground and most importantly, get the log diary from the reward rift. Then use the exit portal, watch the cutscene and once in the menu, make sure you put the diary in your stash so you won't lose it during the next few games. 
So the following three steps can be done in any order, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be showing them in increasing difficulty. Your objective now is to collect all remaining three items, and you can get them in the same game or do each separately. So our first item is going to be the pill bottle. First, you need a brain rot ammo mode on your weapon and head over to any of the ether nests around the map. Go inside and shoot a cyst with the brain rot weapon. Then throw a decoy to survive since you need to hold the interaction button to collect the purple rarity version of the pill bottle. Now you have to go around the map to find an ether tag. These are the purple portals that redeploy it to the air and can be randomly found on the map. So, with the item in your inventory, go inside the tear and when it redeploys it to the air, you will see a green portal that you have to fly into. Once done, a new purple big bounty contract will fall from the sky and you have to accept that and hunt down an elite mimic enemy in a horde of other mimics. See, is this always in the low threat zone? A rare weapon with the brain rot ammo mod can melt the mimic's head, dropping the golden version of the pill battle. Now it's your call to continue or extract this item to put it into safety. The next item is going to be the surveillance camera and first you need to have dead wire ammo mod on your weapon and then find a harvester orb flying around the map. These things randomly spawn to all threat zones and you can see all the known small locations for them on this image. Once you find one keep shooting it with your dead wire weapon until it blows up. You know you are doing it right if the orb turns yellow. Then you can pick up the epic rarity version of the camera. Now same deal as before, find the tear and fly into the now yellow colored portal in the sky. Accept the big bounty contract and hunt down the marked elite disciple amongst the other disciple enemies. This mission is always inside the medium threat zone, so I would advise a little setup to be able to take them down or simply use a juggernaut suit. After killing the disciple, you can collect the ultra rarity version of the camera and again it's your call to continue or extract the item. And now it's time to get our last item, the dog collar. First you must have a molotov or a termite in your inventory and then find a burning dog house around the map. It doesn't matter in which zone you find one and on this image you can see all the possible spawn locations around the map. When you are next to a dog house, put the molotov or termite inside and then kill the hellhound. This will drop the dog collar. Now, find an eater tear, fly into the now red portal, accept the big bounty contract and take down the manglers. Since this mission is always inside the high threat zone, I would recommend either activating a deadbolt turret and luring the manglers there, or buying a juggernaut suit to take them down. But after the mangler dies, a reward rip will spawn and you can collect the final version of the dog collar. And at this point you should have all 4 offerings and you must bring all of them into the game inside your inventory. Head over to the Eater Tornado on this little island inside the high threat zone and here you will find 4 pedestals each corresponding to one of the items in your inventory. So you have to go to each one of them and open their menu and put the Log Diary on top of the Ice Pedestal, the Pill Bottle on top of the Brain Rot Pedestal, the Camera on top of the Lighting Pedestal and lastly the Dog Color on top of the Fire Pedestal. But before you put down the last offering, make sure you have Juggernaut suit and you call it in. Again, for the sake of simplicity, there's no reason to set up when you can buy this thing for 10,000 points in the high threat zone. The tornado will then form a real entrance to the Dark Eater, but first you have to kill a red mega abomination. That's why we need the Juggernaut suit. And once done, you will get your first sigil, and the portal stays there forever, so you don't have to repeat all the previous steps with the offerings. So from now on, if you want to go inside the Dark Ether, you have to insert a sigil into the front side of the portal, but then you're gonna lose it. You have to complete tier 3 or Dark Ether contracts for a random chance to get more normal sigils, and you can also put these into your stash for later use. But first, let me explain how the Dark Ether works, and then show the solo strategies. You have 30 minutes inside here, and you can see 3 Dark Ether bunnies in front of you. Those are contracts, and your objective is to complete as many as you can, then Exfil. In this image you can see the map of the Dark Eater with the Exfil and Contract locations and these are always in the same spot. The first bunny is on the left side of the bridge and you can find it on top of this building facing the fortress and this is the Eater Extractor contract. The second bunny location might be familiar, it's on the green bus near the restroom at the back of the map and this is the Outlast contract. Lastly, the third bunny is on the bastion facing the big warehouse in the fortress and this is the escort contract. While you are doing them, you have a chance to get new classified items as acquisitions and there's a chance to get other sieges. The other sieges are the key to form the new classified schematics. So if you want to form these or any of the items, I would advise keeping the escort contract since the other two can be done with basically zero setup. Just make sure you have stamina up, juggernaut and tombstone so if you die you can get back your inventory in the next game. There's always an exit portal at the top of the highest bastion and the other one is in the cellar when you enter from the warehouse side of the map. To use the adder siege, you must head over to the rift and insert it into the other side of the portal. 
the rift will turn red instead of yellow, and the only way to get more Adder Sieges is by doing Dark Aether contracts. So in this version of the Dark Aether, you only have 15 minutes and the enemy spawns are more dense, but every contract guarantees a new schematic. To be specific, the first completed contract always gives you the Dark Bone recipe, the second gives you the Golden Armor Plate schematic, and the third completed contract is always the Aether Blade plans. So let me show you the proper setup if you want to do all 3 contracts in the same game to exfil with all the classified schematics and unlock the geode blueprint for the MCW which looks beautiful without that scope of course. This weapon is the reward for doing all 3 contracts in a single game but no matter in which version of the Dark Eater you do that. The only weapon you're gonna need is a tier 3 pack a punch tier with this loadout purple rarity is more than enough and with napalm burst ammo mod. This will be the special enemy killer weapon and the napalm burst is the weakness of both the abominations and the manglers. I would advise going all out with your perks and make sure you either activate the tier 3 hellhound or get a dog bone from a previous match. Have energy mine as your field upgrade and get a sentry to rent. Lastly, and this will be the time consuming part, you need at least 8 Casimir black hole grenades in your inventory. The best way to get that many is to dedicate a game, farming around 40,000 points and then die with tombstone so in the next game you can get back your points and then buy them from a buy station in the high red zone for 5,000 points each. I know this seems like a lot and to be honest you only need to do this if you want to complete all 3 contracts to get the etherblade plans, since 2 contracts can be done with 0 setup, no weapons, only using decoys. Ok but now let's start with the escort contract strategy. First get rid of the abomination before starting the ECV, there's always one around it. Then put the sentry to red on top of the vehicle for extra defense and escort it by running next to it so you can kill zombies more easily. When the tank reaches the first vortex, throw a Casimir, run around killing zombies, activate energy mine as soon as you can and throw another Casimir until the ECB starts moving. Then same thing as before, escort it to the second vortex by running next to it and focus on killing any manglers, disciples or mimics. During the second stop, throw a Casimir again, then use energy mine and throw another Casimir and always run around to kill zombies with the tear. Before reaching the final vortex, you have to face an abomination again. Pro tip, focus on escorting the tank instead and throw a Casimir. Then after reaching the final vortex, spam every Casimir you still have while also activating the energy mine whenever you can. During the final defense, try to focus on the abomination and if the rocket launches, well you did complete the challenge and got a new schematic. But before moving on, two more extra tips. If you are lucky enough to have deadbolt turrets around the route where the ECB goes, make sure you activate them so it's a good idea to bring in one or two circuits. Lastly, and take this with a grain of salt since I was unable to test it, but it seems shooting the ECV with the new VR-11 Wonder Weapon restores its health. I'm sure if it's true, this will be patched soon. But now let's continue with the Ether Extractor contract. This is from a different gameplay to show you the no setup strategy, because both this and the Atlas contract can be farmed if you have decoys, a field upgrade ready and friendly hellhunt. So start the contract, jump towards the fortress and use the zipline to go to the top. The first rocket is right here but I would advise simply running past because too many enemies are defending it most of the time. Instead run into the bastion, use the ladder and take the same route as me in the video to reach the second rocket. Throw a decoy and you should have enough time to defuse it. Next jump down to the left towards this window and use the stairs all the way up to the highest point of the fortress. You can find the other rocket here, throw a decoy again and quickly defuse it. Lastly jump down towards here and there will be only a few enemies around the first rocket since we lured them away. Activate your field upgrade and deactivate the rocket owning the reward reef with the schematic. And now if you go towards the beach where you fought the worm, you can start the outlast contract. The strategy will be super simple, stand on the railing and let your dog kill zombies. But after a while you should start running circles in the area, jumping across railing and back and forth. You can also activate your field upgrade and throw some decoys or casimirs. But once the contract is complete, you will be guaranteed to get another schematic. I think it's obvious these two are much easier if you have a weapon fully upgraded, but I just wanted to show you how to farm them with no setup. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you find it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe because it took me days to put this video together. You can also watch my full no commentary gameplay of the Adver Sager Dark Eater run and all images that were in the video can be downloaded from the description. So, thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.